So I wanted to make a quick video addressing a video I uploaded a couple years ago titled Laughing at Piper Clip. Now it's one of the most, if you haven't seen it, it's one of the most uh, oddball, uh, weird, it's one of the weirdest videos I've seen of a preacher attempting to preach a sermon, not at any fault of John Piper's, but simply because everything he says, the people in the audience laugh at it. And it's extremely uncomfortable. Now, someone emailed me in regards to this clip and kind of gave me some context to why the people were laughing. And so what happened was the people that worked with Desiring God to arrange the uh, segment for his sermon, they mixed it up with a, a comedy act that was supposed to take place at the same time as John Piper. So the people there are actually believing that they, they, I guess they're there to see the comedian that they came to see. How that happened, I have no idea. But that's why they're laughing, because they're taking John as a comedian. And so it's interesting to, to note how when we set our minds to believe something, how we can deceive ourselves. Because nothing John Piper said was actually funny. Nothing he said was funny. But they're sitting there believing because he's a comedian in their mind that what he's saying is hilarious. And so I'm going to go ahead and let you guys play, watch the clip. I feel honored and humbled and vulnerable and exposed to speak to the American Association of Christian Counselors. I don't think I could think of any other audience that would be more likely to see straight through a speaker <laughs> than you, you would. And I take that to be a good thing. It uh, puts hypocrisy on the table immediately. It uh, it makes true horizontally what we all know is true vertically all the time, namely God knows totally all the time whether any speaker is a fraud or a hypocrite, so you may as well know as well if he knows. <laughs> it's a wake-up call to speak to people like you. I've never done anything like this before a wake-up call to the realities of uh, pretense in my life, suspecting that any, any attempt at uh, schmoozing would be known right away. <laughs> so I thought I would spare you the analysis and just go ahead and tell you up front that um, I'm a sinner. And uh, I'm a man who, um, to be more specific, must crucify the love of praise every day. A man who struggles with the same 15-year-old uh, adolescent fears at age 63, namely the, the fear of looking foolish. A man who is prone to self-pity and who uh, feels it quickly when he doesn't get loved the way he wants to be loved. Who's almost never uh, sure of the way he uses his time and therefore pretty regularly is all dealing with guilt feelings. A man who is uh, short on compassion and long on critical analysis. A man who is uh, prone to freeze up emotionally when he's tired and, and then feels uh, instinctively justified in blaming it on somebody else. <laughs> A man who loves to praise God in the, in the great assembly and, and feels a constraint on my spirit in my own living room. A man who has loved his wife for over 40 years imperfectly and spent three of those years with a Christian counselor trying to learn how to be Christ and the church to each other. A man who never feels sure of his motives, including the ones I feel right now about why I'm doing this. <laughs> and you're a very strange audience because I totally did not expect laughter. And, and I'm continually perplexed. 
So I guess I'd better just get used to it. I, this is a serious talk, in case you wonder. <laughs> But uh, this is strange. So you can just kind of get it out of your system. I, I know that you've been set up for an hour and a half, maybe a little differently, but uh, I'm just not used to being laughed at, you know? So at one level, I, I uh, thought maybe the reason I, I just did what I did was because I wanted you to be open to what I have to say, and I thought if I'm open with you, you might be open to what I have to say. At a, at a deeper level, which I hope is true also, I, I list those absolutely true, absolutely serious, and, and though they make you laugh, they make me cry, and I mean that, so you've got to stop laughing like that. I just don't understand you folks. Um, um, I mean, I'm, I'm going to stop telling you not to laugh because we're creating a real guilt situation here. Um, my other reason for telling you the list of the, the besetting sins that I could think of in my life is because I want you to know as I begin that I love grace. I love the grace of God. I desperately need the grace of God every day of my life. And... Uh, so I'm not talking hypothetically about grace. So since I'm so needy of grace and, and uh, we have a few minutes left to deal with this, let me pause and thank the Lord for it and pray for his help. Would you pray with me?